Hi class, today we're starting chapter six, writing on the web. Now the first question is why write online? Well, whenever you're writing online, of course, you are offered the opportunity to directly interact with your audience. That means looking at any analytics related to pages that you publish, any comments your audience might have, um, suggestions, emails, all of those things are available whenever you work with an online medium. You can also offer immediate updates either through social media or through email or even regular blog posts or web other web announcements. If you're involved with a particular organization where you need to you need to release a an emergency uh, press release, then you're able to do so using a website or a blog or any kind of social media platform. You can also offer, let's say if you're working in entertainment, if there's a, comp a movie trailer or a sudden announcement, if you're the company releasing the movie, you're able to make an announcement about it. If you're someone who comments on movies, then you would be able to offer that immediate feedback about a, an announcement you didn't expect. Now, of course, there are lots of different ways to interact with your audience. A website or blog would be closest to a traditional news forum. Um, if you want to send email announcements, that is also a, uh, a very practical way to interact with your audience. You can also have RSS feeds. That's a really simple syndication or social media as well. All of those are different ways you can offer information to your audience. And of course, there are tons of different kinds of websites. You have traditional news analogs. That's usually um, websites that are run by TV stations, radios, traditional newspapers. There are also online only news websites. And something like that would be maybe HuffPost. Uh, they have a, a news affiliation. Um, a local version, of course, would be The Current. They, they only operate online. They don't have a print or TV component. Magazines often now will be both online and in print. You can even have specialized content websites, uh, like if you want to have a fashion blog or maybe something about interior design. They even have multiple websites that deal with uh, space. Or if you're running a, a government agency like or something that's government affiliated like NASA, then you can also uh, make announcements on there and have that kind of specialized content, but still be able to interact with the audience online. Now, whenever you're writing, for any medium, but especially when you're writing online, you need to consider your audience. What are your audience's needs? Most of the time you need to look at their, how much attention are they going to give this post and how are they going to use your information? Are they going to or want to interact with it in some way? Or maybe is it something that you're expecting them to look at on a phone or on a computer? Um, maybe they have a shorter attention span whenever, whenever your audience is looking at a social media post compared to a longer format article on a website. And of course, you also need to look at the immediacy. Are there any story updates um, or... Maybe there's a longer running story, something where you anticipate needing to update it several times. You're going to want to include dates in those kinds of stories, especially, or whenever you're developing story updates, you have to consider how your audience is going to view them. You 
either want to maybe include links to uh, newer versions of a story if you're you're publishing some kind of breaking news, or perhaps you want to go and uh, include it within the same page if it's a short amount of information. If it's something a little longer, then maybe you'll want to update it and then go back and and include some kind of uh, information on the original page to say, hey, this story has been updated. Here's a link. And of course, you do want to keep that viewing platform in mind. So again, if you're looking at, at someone in your audience primarily using a phone versus a computer, then your formatting is, is going to be a little different. Um, you also want to consider if it's something where they're going to maybe have a, a touch screen element, are they going to need a video or, or pictures along with it? Maybe the way you develop it using subheadings will be different if you're thinking they're going to look at it on a small screen versus a larger one. And of course, you also want to make it easy for them to click any included links and, and make sure that you aren't driving them away from your, from your blog or your website. Now, of course, there are additional elements. Um, again, this would be photos, if maybe in a slideshow format, or if you want to have an image with a subheading and maybe bullet points, or if, you, if you're doing a, a, a tutorial, then maybe you need to include a video along with written directions. Or if it's part of a podcast series, then you might include the original audio and then a version of the story in written form underneath it. Now let's take a look at it at one of those examples. Now this is from National Public Radio. They, um, so NPR includes a copy of their audio at the beginning of each story. And of, they also have, of course, the title of the work, as well as who worked on the story and when it was published. And in their version, they, they have the audio uh, copy first, then since they are a radio, a radio station, and they also include some kind of heading picture as well, and kind of a, a mini version of the story at the very beginning. So this is formatted um, following more of the traditional news writing format that's uh, going to be the inverted pyramid style. Um, but then it changes a little bit. They include subheadings with additional information, but it's something that's also closely related to the main topic, the main story. So it, it's still the same story, but they're, they break it down a little more for someone who might be looking at this on a phone where it's a little harder to figure out where different elements are. So they'll make it... Um, they make the subheadings a little larger, make them stand out. And depending on the website, of course, sometimes they'll also include a little bar at the beginning at where you can click and go to a particular area within an article. And as you can see, they end with a kind of their version of what needs to happen in order to address burnout. So it's still action oriented and includes uh, examples here as to why this is important. And you can always click on the link. 
and it'll show up um, and give you that source. So you can look back, you can look at it and you don't have to take their word for it. Okay. Just is having a, a little trouble loading. Now let's look at another example. This is from WikiHow. So the point of the NPR article was to deliver information to an audience related to a particular topic. And it was information that you would primarily either read or you would listen to the audio copy. This one, they're giving you information. They're offering information where you are, they're expecting you to try and do whatever they're explaining. So they still give you a little, a short explanation at the beginning. You still have everyone's information, data publication, and a title. But you also have those quick links to different parts of the article. Like if you want to look at reflexology for the feet instead of the hands and all of these other sections. And they go through and break everything down into subheadings, hands and feet. But you also have pictures to go along with each section. And they not only give you a small paragraph explaining each step, but they also added bullets to make certain parts of the directions clearer. So you can see here, they have step two, step three, and each one has that short paragraph and then little bullet points. Now this third article is a little different from the previous two. They're explaining the best fitness trackers and watches for different people. So, they still have a date of publication and the person who wrote the article, we still have that title and we still have an introduction here and additional information related to when it was updated. But they also have the pictures and subheadings now, of course, these are for products. So we do have product links in here, but they have a, a couple of paragraphs under each subheading explaining different choices and their method of testing or why they chose a certain watch over another one. So even though they aren't explaining how to do something, they know people will want to see the product they're describing. So they have product pictures as well as descriptions and explanations of their recommendations. As you saw in those examples, each writing format breaks the information down into small, important bits of information. And often what happens, especially with news stories, is if it's something really complex, it'll be broken down into multiple stories in addition to multiple paragraphs and maybe even headlines and subheadlines. Uh, depending on the item, it may have 
They may include bullet lists instead of paragraphs or maybe in addition to a paragraph. There may be images or videos or audio files. It really depends on how you need to communicate with your audience to give them information in the best way. And this could also include slideshows. Now, whenever you're updating topics, it depends on the topic. If it's a, um, a breaking story where you don't have, where you only have a very small amount of information, you might stack the most recent information on top and have everything else underneath. If it's something that's become a bit more complex, then you might link to that original article, but have a more detailed version later on a, a separate web page. Of course, whenever you are, when you're writing anything online, you need to include dates because it's, it makes it so much easier for your audience to understand, oh, this article was written first and then they went back and found this other information and they wrote this new version of it. So it helps your audience and you to remember when you made certain edits or improvements. There are also additional sources. If there are source updates, any links to newer pages or further explanation, if you need to maybe update something based on an outside source or include your outside sources within your article, you're able to do so. Now, when you're writing, of course, you need to think about your audience, think about your, um, your organization and look at focus, depth and value of what you're writing. Whenever you're looking for a writing topic, especially when you're writing for a medium as huge as the internet, you need to focus on a specific topic Often uh, niche topics are a great place to start. If you want to, let's say, write about movies, then maybe you want to focus only on sci-fi movies or maybe classic sci-fi and develop what you're writing from there. So you're looking at, um, at maintaining a particular, basically a genre whenever you are writing for an organization. It could be that you're maybe writing press releases, um, like let's say for NASA, if you need to write press releases related to ongoing projects or different things, you're still keeping the focus um, of that organization in mind whenever you're writing or if you're writing about a, a particular hobby or maybe a group like Greenpeace, then you need to make sure that your writing follows that organization's uh, directives and you keep whatever their main idea is in line with all of your writing. So you're looking at developing a, not only a unified voice, but something that's kind of a mix of personal and professional writing. This doesn't mean that you're going to talk about yourself the whole time. You're going to make sure that you're, you're a little, you're looking for a little more audience engagement when you're writing for the internet. And you want to make sure that whatever you're writing is adding to a discussion. That means doing the research, making sure that you are, that you aren't just rehashing something that a thousand other people have done. See if maybe there's an angle they missed and then figure out what you should focus on. 
And of course, whenever you're writing, you always want to include a links to your other sources that could be um, embedded links within the article or maybe references at the end, just something so people can see that you are, that you're actually looking up information and you have reliable sources. Now, in the next lesson, we are going to continue with chapter six, part two.